Hey guys, Coach Sue here with Physique Development and I wanted to talk today a little bit about what the difference is between a free meal and a refeed. But before I get there, I wanna talk about definitions or more so the connotation towards certain verbiage of things, which I think is really important to talk about. So a lot of times people use the term cheat meal and I don't like to personally use that word. I like to use free meal or an untracked meal. And the biggest difference in this is just the connotation towards that. Cheating is recognized as bad and when you do it, it feels like you're doing something bad when realistically untracked meals free meals aren't bad and you're not cheating on anything so being able to have that mentality towards it also allows you to go into that experience with a lot better headspace without feeling guilty having that stress which can affect digestion which can make you feel worse see the scale go up and you see that kind of snowball as a whole so I'll be referring to them as free meals or untracked meals and I wanted to talk about the difference between what a free meal is versus what a refeed is is, um, because they do have some similarities, but they do have a lot of differences too. So when we're looking at refeeds, it's going to be a controlled influx of food, normally in the realm of carbs, because we have seen benefits from increasing carbs with leptin levels during a dieting phase. And I will be doing a different video going more into the science of refeeds as a whole. Uh, but carbs, um, a controlled influx of calories, mostly in the form of carbs. Another thing within refeeds, it is going to be easier to collect data back from because you have that controlled environment, you're able to collect data a little bit better. Refeeds can last one to two days, sometimes the last three days. There is great research showing that a 48 hour refeed can be extremely beneficial. And another thing with refeeds is it is going to be um, something that will be able to increase that leptin and then be able to keep going. And they're normally used in dieting phases. They're not normally used um, when you're in a maintenance or surplus, not always, but mostly. Um, and then with a free meal, it's going to be something that's a, not controlled. Uh, so it's going to be going out to dinner, getting Mexican, getting burgers, getting something and not tracking it. Um, and again, those aren't bad. It's going to be all contextual and based on your individual needs at that time. Uh, but within a free meal, another thing is it can sometimes trigger that, that concept of, oh, I need more food because you're in something that you don't have that controlled variable. And with those variables kind of again, snowballing where there's multiple variables that play, it's more likely for you to spike your weight after it or have some residual effects from that, from having high sodium, having a higher influx of food than you originally planned, or making it be a free for all, which is not what we want either. So the, the similarities of them is they're both gonna be an influx of calories. The biggest difference is going to be controlled versus a not controlled situation there. Now, the thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're going into a free meal, some tips here is to contextualize the meal. Most of the time, the overeating from a free meal doesn't come from the fact that you're allowed this food. It comes from the, the thought process of this is the last and only meal of this type and I need to eat everything that I see because I don't know a time where I'm gonna be able to have a burger again or ice cream or now I should go to the gas station and get gummy bears or anything like that. So being able to contextualize that meal and recognize that there are gonna be more of those coming forward. Another Another thing is to still keep protein in the meal. That's not only gonna help with satiation, but it's gonna help with hitting protein goals for that day. And then big recommendation when it comes to it is really focusing on the social aspect. This isn't something that is just about the food. Of course, it's a nice mental break to not have to look something up, plug it into my fitness pal, and have to make concessions as to a meal you actually wanted. It's a time where you're able to relax and enjoy that meal, which you might have not been able to track accurately, but also be able to spend time with people. People. Food is so social and it's something that you want to be able to enjoy socially. So really being able to focus on the people you're around instead of how much food that you can eat. And the last tip that I'll kind of go moving forward because refeeds are going to be very individualized in regards to what your needs are within that dieting phase. But with free meals, something that physique development likes to go with, let's say you have five meals a day every day. If they're the same meals every single day, just take that fifth meal, chop it off and replace it with a free meal. If you kind of move around your macros they're in different places throughout the day what I would do is take whatever your macros are take each macro and divide it by the amount of meals you normally eat so let's go with that five again if you have five meals let's say you have 125 grams of protein because that's gonna be the easiest math for me to do right now if you divide that by five you're gonna multiply it by four you're trying to hit 100 grams of protein that day let's say you have 50 grams of fat you'll divide that by five then multiply it by four you'll hit 40 grams of fat that day so that allows 
allows you still some structure in your day of macros that you need to hit, but then it allows you to be able to go and enjoy the meal, eat the meal, and not like you starved yourself all day, and then it turns into something where it leads to overeating. So those are the differences and similarities between free meals and refeeds, as well as going over why you shouldn't use the term cheat meal and the mentality that that furthers, and then some tips on how physique development likes to guide their clients through that. If you find yourself traveling a lot or you're on the go, busy, can't always meal prep, or you just want to enjoy some of your favorite fast food restaurants still, I would highly suggest heading over to physiquedevelopment.com to look at any tips and tricks from us, but especially the fast food ebook that you can download for $5.